हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन। टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द फोटो डिटेक्टर्स टाइप्स एंड द मटेरियल यूज फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द फोटो डिटेक्टर्स आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वर आई टॉक्ड अबाउट द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द फोटो डिटेक्टर नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द फोटो डिटेक्टर्स दैट वी हैव The first type of the photo detector is the external photo detector and the second type is the internal photo detector. So the devices which are using the external photo detector are the external photo detector devices. Right now what is the external photo detector which are used external to the given device, right? These are very bulky so I cannot use it internal to the structure of the receiver. So these are used externally at a separate location right and the signal which is detected is transmitted to the receiving end now what happens they are for example they are the vacuum tubes they are bulky and they requires high voltage for operation so because they are bulky they cannot be used in a very small device they cannot be used they have to put separately externally and this is the reason they are called the external photo detector devices and they are using the high voltage so the power requirement would be high which is also not possible for us to give right for a low cost communication we are not going to give a very high power now coming to the internal photo detector devices right so internal photo detector devices so this is a photo detector actually you can correct it so now internal photo detector devices are the semiconductor devices we all know the semiconductors are very small they can be fabricated on the vlsi chips even so they are internal to the receiver they have not to be put outside the receiver they can be adjusted well inside the small structure of the receiver so with or without internal avalanche gain they have so if they are having the gain they will be providing the amplification in the output received signal as well but if they are not having the gain they will be giving the signal as it is what it has detected it will be giving me the output like without the gain now for example we have the germanium we have the silicon these are two the semiconductors then we can make the semiconductors using the group 3 and group 5 alloys as well right like for example indium phosphorus right we can make the group 3 group 4 alloys in the form of a semiconductor so now the major operating regions are the three region for the first generation second generation and the third generation systems which is from 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer 1.3 micrometer and 1.5 micrometer these are the three operating regions these are the different wavelength over which i want to operate right now i will be having the pin and the avalanche photodiodes which are majorly used as the semiconductor devices so we are going to talk about the pin and the avalanche photodiodes in detail in the upcoming videos also so now you can see we have the different optical window i have classified the different optical windows and now we are going to talk about the photo detector material and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this photo detector material at the given wavelength so first we are starting with the basic window which is 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer right the photo detector material that is used is the silicon now we know the silicon is having the larger band gap energy than the germanium we all know this thing so the dark currents would be less in the silicon so this is the advantage of using the silicon we have the low dark current and the speed would be high right so i hope you understood in the 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer the basic silicon devices are used which are having high speed and the low dark currents now coming to the 1 to 1.6 micrometer actually this is classified as 0.8 to 1.6 but actually it is 1.1 to 1.6 we are using it in the 1.1 to 1.6 to micrometer range only right so here we can use the germanium or group 3 group 5 alloys like we can use the indium gallium arsenide or we can use gallium arsenide lead or which is deposited on the indium phosphide or the gallium lead right so this is the substrate indium phosphide and the gallium lead are the substrate and now 
the devices which are used to form are the indium gallium arsenide or the gallium aluminium lead now what is the advantage of using the 3 5 group uh, alloys or the germanium we are having the good response but as i told you the band energy gap is less in this case so the dark current would be high in the germanium that can be avoided if i am using the alloys group 3 group 5 alloys will not be having a high dark current and so i can say the dark currents are less so the operation would be faster and without some errors now coming to the largest wavelength range which is the 2 to 12 micrometer this was the first generation this was the second generation now here in the 2 to 12 micrometer which is the largest operating wavelength we can use the hetero junction transistor we have already talked about the hetero junctions we have the junctions which are made by the two different materials right so at the junction we have two different materials in the hetero junction transistors and we can use a photoconductive material as well. Now here we will be having the good response time and we will be having comparatively very less noise. So I hope you understood all of the types of the photo detector right both of the types in detail and what are the basic difference between both of them and the basic materials used according to the different wavelengths if you have any doubt in any of the topic that i have discussed you can put the doubt in the comment and i'm going to reply or revert to you as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and give me your feedback thank you so much